Up until now, the Pixel 3 XL has remained the top favorite smartphone camera at Mr. Phone. It has won almost all of the flagship camera comparisons, with the iPhone Terrace Max mostly coming in second in all of these comparisons. Now, with the P30 Pro coming to India, I'm really excited to find out if it can actually upset Google's juggernaut. Are four cameras on the P30 Pro better than the two cameras on the iPhone Terrace Max and the single camera on the Pixel 3 XL? Well, I'm a shot from Mr. Phone, and let's get this really interesting battle started. we move on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. Also, we've started this new thing where we have curated five of the best gadgets and the best deals across e-commerce websites, links to which should be in the description below. As usual, we have a handy comparison sheet for specs. If you were to judge the smartphones based just on the camera specs, the P30 Pro would win comfortably. But that's not how things work here. Let's get down to the actual shooting and analyzing instead. You can pause here and read if you want, by the way. I really want to start off with the low light shots. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Allow me to reveal the images one by one, slowly. The first image is from the iPhone XS Max. This is what my eyes saw. The second image is from the Pixel 3 XL without night sight. Okay, never mind. Let's switch on night sight. Incredible transformation, right? But wait for it. Here it is. Let's get the drum roll going. Ta-da! The P30 Pro. Shocked? Well, I was too. In fact, with night mode on, it looks like it is actually the afternoon and not really pitch dark. So what is the moral of the story here? Don't give the P30 Pro to a murderer or he could use the pictures taken in night and pass them off as afternoon shots, which could be the perfect alibi. Well, jokes apart, I have one more sample for you in pitch dark. Look how clean the P30 Pro sample looks in comparison to the night side shot from the Pixel 3 XL. Little to no noise at all. It is all thanks to the new RYYB Pixel Array. The yellow pixels that replace the green ones in the traditional RGGB sensor have the capacity to let in 30% more light. This is apart from the 10% more light that the f by 1.6 aperture can let in. My only concern with the low light photography on the P30 Pro is that in areas with multiple sources of light, the exposure mapping goes for a toss. Look at the picture here inside a lowly lit pub. Clearly, if you don't pixel peep, the Pixel 3 XL looks better. In fact, even the iPhone looks somewhat good because you feel like it offers good exposure. I have a suspicion that the P30 Pro is exposing for the brightest points and therefore the darker portions remain dark. I just suggest you choose a different, less brighter source of light while shooting to get a better shot. That said, the details and noise control are still the best on the P30 Pro's sample, undoubtedly. The inconsistency with exposure is the only thing that is slightly annoying. Otherwise, the P30 Pro emerges the champion of low-light photography. It is plain incredible what this camera can do. Moving on to our regular sequence after that mind-blowing start, here's our wide sample. One look at the three samples, you will see how widely different all the samples actually look. As usual, the Pixel 3 XL has got for a very contrast-heavy image with little to no details in the shadows. The iPhone XS Max tends to accentuate the color of the sky. It is definitely not how the sky actually looked when I shot the three samples. The P30 Pro does a far better job of color accuracy compared to all the other three phones. That said, the P30 Pro tends to overexpose slightly and thereby blowing out the highlights sometimes. The iPhone and the Pixel look great because of the better dynamic range on offer. Coming to the sensor details, you will once again notice that the P30 Pro excels here. Note that we've shot a 10 megapixel pixel bend photo here. If you wish, you can also shoot a full 40 MP shot, but it won't look as detailed. To find out the differences in the details, move your eyes from the Sagar Ratna board to the JMD Megapolis barricade at 100% crop. You will see how crisp the P30 Pro actually looks. Overall though, the P30 Pro definitely looks more natural and offers more details. But wait for it, the P30 Pro has a dedicated 20 megapixel wide angle camera as well. Oh well, we know which phone is winning this round of testing. I took a few close-up shots of flowers as usual. The first one is this yellow flower and the P30 Pro really does something weird with the depth on the rear. It used to happen often with the Mate 20 Pro as well. When you go close to a subject, the phone focuses the center portion very well and showcases all the details, but the background blur looks absolutely fake, like a software-induced portrait mode was applied. The iPhone has a good exposure, but I think the contrast on the Pixel 3 XL's shot makes it look more attractive. But I have to tell you this, that is not how the flower looked. 
Anyway, in the next shot, you can see that the Pixel 3 XL has clearly underexposed the image in comparison to the iPhone XS Max. At a closer crop, you will see that the P30 Pro offers such crisp details at the center of the image where it has chosen to focus. But the rest of the flower is a blur once again. It's, it's like the portrait mode thing is happening again. There is no consistency in details when focusing at a close range, which can be seen on the Pixel shot or even the iPhones for that matter. Overall, it was a tough call, but I'm going with the iPhone for close-up shots. The colors and the exposure are better on the iPhone, and that makes the photos look good in comparison to the other two phones. For the first time in our camera comparison, we have a macro mode test to see how close flagship smartphones can go to a subject. This is due to the fact that the P30 Pro has a dedicated super macro mode that produces stunning results. And I'm convinced that a lot of folks will make good use of this feature. Well, evidently, the P30 Pro wins here. Just look at how close I could get to the Honor Watch magic. But what I found intriguing was that the iPhone XS Max could go closer than the Pixel 3 XL while shooting. Oh well, these are just things you find while doing camera comparisons. The P30 Pro has a dedicated telephoto camera and so does the iPhone XS Max. Google uses a software-based algorithm called Super S Zoom to capture pictures that are close to optical zoom. The P30 Pro can do up to 5x zoom thanks to the periscope lens inside it. The iPhone XS Max does 2x magnification using the telephoto camera. Just take a look at the samples on offer here as we switch the zooming capabilities. What we see here is the first zoom stop on all the three cameras. The iPhone is at 2x zoom, the P30 Pro is at 5x zoom. It can do lower as well if you wish. and the Pixel 3 XL is at around 3x zoom. Evidently, the P30 Pro just tramples over the competition with its extremely detailed sample. What's more, the P30 Pro can go up to 10x hybrid zoom with a very tiny loss of detail and some evident softening. In comparison, the Pixel 3 XL starts losing fidelity and looks softer than the pillow I used to sleep every day. Undoubtedly, the P30 Pro wins the zoom round. And before I forget, you can achieve creep mode with the 50x zoom on the P30 Pro. And which is probably the reason why Shri is not very amused. Before I start talking about the portrait mode, there are two ways you can do it on the P30 Pro. There is a dedicated portrait mode with all the cool depth effects and variants on offer, or you can choose the aperture mode to adjust the level of blur in the background. Also, the P30 Pro uses the TOF camera for better depth mapping. And boy, the extra camera actually works and it does show in the results. The P30 Pro's aperture mode sample looks incredible with a near accurate edge detection and an incredibly believable natural looking blur in the background. Just take a look at the shirts fold around the left hand on all the three phones, you will see how kick-ass the P30 Pro looks. The iPhone XS Max, as usual, only keeps the face in focus for some odd reason. For some reason, the portrait mode on the P30 Pro tends to shoot at a cooler temperature and it doesn't look as impressive as the aperture mode in my opinion. That said, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the P30 Pro is better than the iPhone XS Max and the Pixel 3 XL for bokeh shots of human subjects. Just ensure that you use the aperture mode. Most modern flagships have HDR always switched on to fire automatically when needed. But but we picked a situation and forced HDR on on all the three phones. The Pixel does nothing to bring out the details from the shadows. The iPhone tends to accentuate the blues and the greens and thereby causing the entire picture to look very cool. But the iPhone does a good job of controlling the harsh sun on the building. That said, the P30 Pro actually beats all the phones with its excellent retrieval of details from the highlights and shadows with natural colors as well. It might not look as dramatic as the Pixel, but the image is a very good representation of how a good HDR algorithm should work. However, I still don't know why Huawei would bury the HDR mode deep inside the recesses of the app. And side note, I'm damn sure the Nokia 9 will beat all these cameras when it comes to dynamic range. I really cannot wait to review the cameras on that phone. Talking about selfies, the Pixel 3 XL has been the unbeatable champion with sharp details and great color accuracy. And the Pixel 3 XL continues to shine in that department. The P30 Pro selfie has been improved from previous flagships, but it is still not as sharp as I'd ideally like it to be. The iPhone XS Max has a very orangey, weird facial tone, but the details are a plenty. Overall though, I'd gravitate towards a Pixel 3 XL for selfies. I know, I know, you guys don't like how it highlights my pores and pimples, but that is me. Deal with it. My face is the face of almost every Indian out there. Oh, you also get wide-angle selfies on the Pixel 3 XL if these crisp selfies weren't enough. When it comes to selfie portraits, I'm not really picking a winner. Allow me to explain why. There are four things I'm looking for in a good selfie portrait. Facial tone, edge detection, how natural the blur looks, and the details. The P30 Pro has great edge detection, a natural looking bokeh effect, and the facial tones are close to my real color too. But the details are soft. The Pixel 3 XL has incredible details, great facial tones, and a heightened but natural looking blur in the background. 
That said, the edge detection is very average. The iPhone XS Max offers good edge detection, the background blur is almost as good as a DSLR, and the details are not bad either. However, my face looks orangey and, you know, very weird. So it really boils down to what sort of processing you prefer. Coming to 4K 30fps video recording, the iPhone XS Max's footage ticks all the right boxes. The video stabilization is top class, the colors are punchy and pleasing, the sound recording is unparalleled, and Apple's new smart HDR algorithm does wonders even when you shoot against harsh sunlight. Undoubtedly, the iPhone XS Max wins this round. The P30 Pro does a very weird facial tone at 4K 30fps. It looks like holy reached late at Huawei. They decided to paint my face red for some odd reason. Also, the sound recording is not that great, which is the same as the Pixel 3 XL. But at least the Pixel 3 XL has a natural looking color temperature that doesn't blind your eyes. And moreover, both the Pixel 3 XL and the P30 Pro top out at 4K 30fps video recording. Whereas the iPhone can do 4K 60fps. Hi guys, we're shooting a video using the P30 Pro right now to check for image quality FPS, to check for image quality, the video stabilization and the sound quality as well. As she pans me around and you will see that the light is falling against me right now and how the camera captures it. Honestly, just pick up an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus if you want to shoot a lot of videos using your phone. The iPhone XS Max continues to be the best choice for shooting videos even at 1080p and the P30 Pro fixes the colors in our 1080p testing. In fact, there is very little difference in image quality and sound quality between the P30 Pro and the Pixel 3 XL here. Hi guys, we're shooting a video using the P30 Pro at 1080p 60p to check out the sound quality, the video quality and the image stabilization as well. Ashri's sound quality as well as she pans me around and you can see right now how the light falls against me. As far as slow motion video recording goes, the iPhone XS Max has been improving the video quality at 240fps. It shoots incredibly detailed footage at 1080p. You can clearly see that the P30 Pro has a softer video because it tends to crop into the subject. I like the Pixel 3 XL's slow motion footage the second best. The P30 Pro definitely has an advantage in slow motion video recording because it does 960fps too. And that doesn't look too bad. Next up, let's shoot a vlog. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm not Casey Neistat. I am merely going to compare the quality of the 1080p selfie video shot by the three phones. Evidently, the iPhone XS Max has the best sound recording of the three phones. And that is what gives it the edge over the other two. Because the crop factor and the quality of image stabilization while shooting video is on par for all the three phones. The color science will be a matter of preference at the end of the day. If I had to pick one, I'd go for the iPhone XS Max over the other two. Hi guys, I'm shooting a video using the P30 Pro right now. at. 1080p uh, using the front camera do check for image stabilization the video quality and the sound quality as well as I turn around and show it and what happens when I turn around and the light is against me shooting under incandescent light the P30 Pro tends to favor a slightly brighter exposure that is very low on contrast the Pixel 3 XL's accurate color temperature plus the incredible contrast makes the picture pop out I would share this picture on social media. The iPhone XS Max has a warm and cozy color temperature. Details wise, the Pixel 3 XL has a lot of the finer information around the sofa, but around the corners there is a lot of noise. Google has always favored details over noise control. And the P30 Pro has an incredible noise reduction algorithm that takes a clean picture through and through. This is evidently the P30 Pro's biggest strength and the details are almost on par with the Pixel 3 XL. Overall, I still think the Pixel 3 XL takes the better picture of the three phones. As far as indoor selfies go, the Pixel 3 XL continues to lead the pack. I'm not dissecting too much here, you can take a closer look for yourself by pausing. So you guys saw the low light prowess of the P30 Pro. I don't even see a reason why the P30 Pro needs a flash. I, it could have made for a cleaner design on the rear. Just a wild thought. And even with flash, the P30 Pro has the other two beat comfortably. Okay, in low light selfies, the Pixel 3 XL has night sight and it emerges as the winner by a huge margin. Even with screen flash on, the Pixel 3 XL offers the most detailed selfie of the three phones. Although I do like the fact that my face is evenly lit on the iPhone XS Max. And finally coming to low light video, the P30 Pro once again takes the lead. It offers a clean, almost noise free video with the right color temperature too. The iPhone and the Pixel have corrected the temperature to a more dull incandescent lighting, whereas the light is actually warm. So we are at the end of this comparison and what you see on your screen right now is the final score tally. And yes, the P30 Pro has finally dethroned the Pixel 3 XL and I'm glad that happened, honestly. 
Having said that, the P30 Pro is not like an outright winner or anything because the Pixel 3 XL still takes the best selfies out there. And the iPhone XS Max, despite its poor low light performance, can take good daylight shots and the video performance continues to be exceptional. Having said that, the P30 Pro more than makes up for those losses with an incredible set of features on offer. For example, did you know that the P30 Pro can actually shoot background blur in video recording? Now, isn't that incredible? This is just one of the features that I'm talking about the P30 Pro. Overall, the P30 Pro seems to be one of the best cameras that you can buy out there. In fact, according to Mr. Phone, it actually is the best camera of 2019 up until now. I had a lot of fun doing this comparison. I hope this comparison helps you when you are about to make that flagship purchase. And if you do plan to make a purchase, don't forget to hit the links in the description below. We have convenient links for you to actually buy these smartphones. Thank you for watching. I'm Ashar from Mr. Phone. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends. Click the link below to download the Oddbots Turbo Run game now.